Here's a very, very, very important book. The Plutonium Files. America's Secret Medical Experiments in the Cold War. By Eileen Wilson. And I believe all Americans should read this. It's time for America to come clean and confess their sins in the past. And clean up their act. Because it's getting pretty filthy. I read you the folder. When the vast wartime factories of the Manhattan Project began producing plutonium in quantities never before seen on Earth, scientists working on the top secret bomb building program grew apprehensive, fearful that the plutonium might cause a cancer epidemic among workers and desperate <coughs> to learn more about it, what it could do <coughs> to the human body. The Manhattan Project's medical doctors embarked upon an experiment in which 18 unsuspecting patients in hospital wards throughout the country were secretly injected with the cancer-causing substance. Most of the patients would go to their graves without ever knowing what had been done to them. Now in the Plutonium Files, Pulitzer Prize winner, winning reporter Eileen Wilson reveals for the first time the breadth of the extraordinary 50-year cover-up surrounding the plutonium injections as well as the deceitful nature of thousands of other experiments conducting on American citizens in the post-war years. Wilson's remarkable investigation spans the 1930s to the 1990s and draws upon hundreds of newly declassified documents and other primary sources to disclose this shadowy, shadowy chapter in American history. She gives a voice to such innocence as Helen Hutchison, a young woman who entered a prenatal clinic in Nashville for a routine checkup and was instead giving a radioactive cocktail to drink. Gordon Shattuck, one of the several boys at a state school for the developmentally disabled in Massachusetts, who was fed radioactive oatmeal for breakfast, and Maud Jacobs, a Cincinnati woman suffering from cancer and subjected to an experimental radiation treatment designed to help military planners learn how to win a nuclear war. Wilson also tells the stories of the scientists themselves many of whom learned the ways of secrecy on the Manhattan Project. Among them are Stafford Warren, a grand figure whose bravado masked a cunning intelligence. Joseph Hamilton, who felt he was immune to the dangers of radiation, only to suffer later from a fatal leukemia. And physician Louis Hempelman, one of the most enthusiastic supporters of the plan to inject humans with potentially carcinogenic doses of plutonium. Hidden discussions of 50 years past are reconstructed here, where entrusted government officials debated the ethical and legal implications of the experiments, demolishing forever the argument that these studies took place in a less enlightened era. Powered by her groundbreaking reportage and singular narrative gifts, Eileen Wilson has created a work of profound humanity as well as major historical significance. <clears throat> In addition to the Pulitzer Prize, Eileen Wilson has received the George Polk Award for National Reporting and the Selden Ring Award for Investigative Reporting, among other honors. She currently resides in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, after reading this book, I know I don't will never completely trust a doctor again. And I wonder about what they want to do to people nowadays. They're making the rich are making our world filthy and NASA was in with this kind of thing and they now have a scientist that is using monkeys to to see if they can change uh, a living body to be able to uh, tolerate carbon dioxide or 
even live on it. And if they're doing it to the people, I would not doubt it a bit. And it's time to stop the evilness going on here. It's going to destroy our nation. <clears throat> I have a little bit more to tell you. And uh, how poisonous plutonium stuff is. Chapter 32, Body Snatching Patriots. The fallout from the bomb test drifted down over the earth. The radioactive debris found its way into starfish, shellfish, and seaweed. It covered alfalfa fields in upstate New York, wheat fields in North Dakota, corn in Iowa. It seeped into the bodies of honeybees and birds, human fetuses, and growing children. The atom and split the world into pre-atomic and post-atomic species. It lost Alamos, Oak Ridge, Hanford, and AEC headquarters in Washington. Scientists were growing uneasy. Could the fallout from the bombs already detonated be creating a health hazard? If not, how many more bombs could be detonated before the human race could, would be put at risk? In the summer of 1953, as the radioactive debris from the upshot knothole test gusted across the continent, a group of military and civilian scientists convened at the RAND, R -A -N -D, Corporation headquarters in Santa Monica, California. Willard Libby, a brash scientist who passionately supported the testing program, and would be awarded the Nobel Prize seven years later for the radioactive carbon dating technique, chaired the meeting. The group decided the only way they could properly ascertain worldwide hazards from fallout was by collecting and analyzing plants, animals, and human tissue from the four corners of the earth. Thus was born Operation Sunshine, one of the most bizarre and ghoulish projects of the Cold War. The source of its name is a matter of debate, but some say it was derived from the fact that fallout like sunshine covered the globe. And they've had body snatchers going all over this earth to get some of these people to see how far it went. And this is only a little bit showing why our cancer cases are skyrocketing in America. They are to blame. One more thing I wanted to read to you was a few pertinent points and there is this book is packed packed with important info that all our people need to know about. Thousands of Americans were used as laboratory animals in radiation experiments funded by the federal government. Many of the subjects were not asked for their consent or given accurate information about the nature of these experiments. Some didn't learn they or their loved ones had been used as guinea pigs until 1994 or 1995. Some still don't know and never will. Many of the doctors and scientists who performed these experiments routinely violated their patients' trust and engaged in deception. They ignored the Hippocratic Oath the 1946 American Medical Association guidelines, the Nuremberg Code, as well as policies adopted by the Atomic Energy Commission in 1947 and by the Defense Department in 1953. Civil and criminal laws also may have been broken. Beyond everything else, the experimenters violated a fundamental right that belongs to all competent adults, the right to control one's own body. Although the majority of the experiments were the so-called tracer studies which involved administering radioactive materials in quantities so small that they probably caused no harm, most scientists agree that no dose can absolutely be called safe. Some studies are known to have very serious consequences. The total body irradiation experiments caused intense suffering and premature death in some patients. The radium rod treatments and some of the radioactive iodine experiments increase the risk of head, neck, and thyroid cancers and other secondary disorders. And that makes me wonder, is that why they're irritating our food that we're all eating? Are they still filling our body full of nuclear poison 
and or carbon dioxide as well and they go against abortion but they're letting them kill our grown people uh, this it's time for these filthy sinful Americans to confess their sins and start cleaning up their act because we have nothing but but disaster ahead for us if people don't rise up and stop it and get these nuclear reactors out of our nation we'll pay for it very dearly in the end